Taurus, hi, Maya here, and this is your reading for 2022. Um, hi Taurus, how are you? <laughs> so, um, before starting, I want to talk a little bit about 2022 um, uh, as a new, uh, in numerology. Um, <clears throat> it's a uh, number six here, you know, two plus two plus zero. And uh, the number six is a beautiful number of harmony, of unconditional love of equal give and take, uh, generosity, balance, and I'm getting uh, this feeling of uh, peace uh, when I think of 2022 and it's like it's going to be some kind of relief um, that comes to all of us on earth after uh, uh, these two challenging years that we've had, uh, 2020 and 2021. They were pretty challenging for everyone, <clears throat> a lot of uh, stagnation, a lot of blocks, um, collectively as a collective uh, of humanity and it like it really feels like 2022 is bringing in a breath of fresh air so uh, let's get right into your reading I'm gonna pull uh, one card for each month I kept on seeing the ace of cups uh, while I was pre-shuffling for you Taurus so let's see what comes out All right, so for January, you've got the Two of Wands. February, you've got the Four of Swords. March, the Lovers. <coughs> April, the Ten of Swords. May, the Sun. <laughs> wow. And uh, June, you have the Nine of Pentacles. July, the Queen of Cups. August, the Nine of Swords. Um, September, the Three of Cups. October, the Seven of Cups. November, the Moon. And December, the Six of Pentacles. And bottom of the deck, you have the Ace of Wands as a main energy. Beautiful, beautiful energy. And death. All right. So let's get right into it. So January, you've got the Two of Wands. And what I'm really feeling here with the Two of Wands is that you, uh, you're coming into uh, 2022 contemplating... Uh, your plans, uh, contemplating your future, really uh, meditating on the next steps to take in your life. It's like in January you're reviewing everything that happened in the past and what I'm feeling is that you're moving from one um, era in your life, one cycle in your, in your life to a completely new one. And to me this represents this Ace of Wands that you have here. Uh, as uh, your main energy and the Ace of Wands is all, all about renewal uh, in spirit, in motivation, in um, enthusiasm, uh, your drive, your um, your um, motor, basically your engine is revving very high here and it's like it's a year of passion for you, a year of motivation, a year of really following your passion and uh, acting it's like inspired action uh, that's what I'm, I'm I'm feeling and I'm feeling that you're leaving the past behind represented by this wand uh, that is bolt bolted to the wall <clears throat> and you have this ace of wands firmly in hand uh, looking uh, at your world the world is your oyster and just making plans from a very grounded place from a very enthusiastic place but really contemplating in January how um, you're gonna move forward uh, in February you have the four of swords so again this this sense of meditation this sense of taking things uh, very slowly but surely 
um, the four of wands uh, could uh, be literally uh, uh, meaning a recovery phase maybe after uh, <clears throat> these past two years you need a little breather uh, maybe um, <clears throat> just uh, because of the celebration the new year celebrations you're taking a time off but you are resting uh, you are resting your mind you are resting your body and again this meditative mode where you're really contemplating very calmly very peacefully and very deliberately your next steps in March we have the Lovers Major Arcana card of Gemini and uh, it's like <clears throat> there is I feel a very deep soul bond uh, that is here uh, for some Tauruses that I'm talking I'm talking to um, there has been a soul bond that was a little bit conflictual in your life um, that made you um, there was a kind of obstacle it was a deep soul bond divine masculine and divine feminine extremely related, extremely um, intimate, overseen by the universe, uh, really the sun shining on this deep soul bond, this connection, but there has been an obstacle that kept on recurring in this, uh, uh, in this connection here. It is unresolved business and you need to drop uh, into your heart to make decisions from a heart-based space. And I feel that maybe uh, uh, we have uh, in April the Ten of Swords, maybe uh, this, uh, and I feel that these cards are absolutely connected, so maybe this deep soul bond um, had, has uh, made you hit rock bottom and is going to make you hit, uh, hit rock bottom uh, in April of 2022 where you feel a little bit betrayed, uh, you feel um, cheated, you feel stabbed in the back. I mean, Ten Swords in the back is a, a pretty painful card, uh, but it's the end of that cycle. It's the end of this suffering because it's a ten, it's a completion. It's the end of the this suit and the darkest hour is over and there's absolutely a new dawn coming in and <laughs> you have the sun uh, in May, so yeah. It's like this um, deep soul bond that is, um, I think it keeps on being there for you. It could be twin flames for some of you, a twin flame journey, but um, any, it doesn't have to be, but deep soul bond, soulmates, so, you know, a very significant relationship uh, in your life um, where you have uh, really uh, been through the mill. And it's like uh, in... Um, uh, in April, uh, in March, and in April, you take the decision to let it go. Uh, you know, to let all the suffering go. You still have this uh, deep pain that is lingering in your energy field, but there's a new dawn, and it looks like you take a major decision to let it go. To let it go, absolutely, because right after the Ten of Swords, we have the Sun in May. So a very, very contrasting energies here from going from the Ten of Swords to the Sun directly in one month. So a decision uh, that is um, also this decision uh, that you take. Sometimes uh, we um, are able to take the right decision at the right moment and then the universe is absolutely behind us having our back and absolutely, um, uh, you know, um, pushing forward this decision in, in a major way and that's what's happening here, here Taurus. Uh, it, yeah, you hit rock bottom, it was very painful. Uh, you uh, are still dealing with that in March and in April but in May, it's all behind you and it's extremely sudden. It's like you, you take this decision to let it go and boom, um, you know, you are in the sun energy, um, Major Icana, Card of Leo. You're leaving all these obstacles behind and this uh, beautiful decision also that you take at the beginning of uh, the year in January to move forward in your own life, to leave the past behind, to have uh, your enthusiasm, your drive, your passion firmly in your hand, uh, you're making plans for the future. It looks like by me you're absolutely doing that, rediscovering the, the wonder of life, uh, your joy, your happiness. It's a life-giving force. The, shine is, uh, the sun is shining on you. Uh, you are uh, feeling uh, joyful and innocent like this uh, naked little child on this white horse of purity. It's like you're rediscovering your innocence. 
your uh, purity, your dis rediscovering the wonder of life, uh, your enthusiasm, your passion. Everything falls into place in May. And it just keeps on getting better because you have the Nine of Pentacles in June. So um, seeing results in your career, advancement uh, in uh, your career or in uh, your financial um, situation. Uh, the Nine of Pentacles is, uh, she is single. So I'm really feeling you're leaving some kind of deep soul bond behind that was uh, uh, painful doesn't mean that it's over, but uh, at least in uh, the beginning, the, the first six months of uh, 2022, you are deciding to leave, it, to leave it on the back burner. It's not going to be for everyone because it's a general reading, but I'm getting this message very clearly here. You're, you're leaving that on the back burner, uh, burner and taking care of yourself. And uh, it suits you very well to do that. You are golden. Uh, the energy of Nine of Pentacles is energy of luxury, of abundance, of uh, there's no codependency whatsoever here. It's uh, self-realization, self-sufficiency, financial independence. You are reaping the fruits of your labor and just uh, sitting pretty, being very attractive as a single person. And if it's not uh, you being single it's, uh, uh, and uh, you are in a couple, it just means that you are living a very uh, harsh uh, time with um, your person behind, uh, dropping into your heart base space and getting into healing. And uh, on your own, within this couple, you are feeling golden. No matter what uh, your person is doing or feeling, you on your own, as an individual, you're just golden, right? That's in June. Uh, in July, you've got the Queen of Cups. So this, um, it's like you got to this beautiful place of the Sun and the Nine of Pentacles, uh, you know, uh, after a harsh time, maybe in um, April here, um, <clears throat> but uh, the solidity that you have, uh, you are nurturing it with the Queen of Cups. You are nurturing, nurturing yourself. Self-love here, I'm feeling a lot of self-love. You're taking care of yourself, of your emotions. You're also very compassionate and patient with others. Uh, maybe uh, for those... Um, where uh, this um, deep soul bond, um, you know, uh, resonates. Uh, maybe uh, you're still contemplating going back to this person. Uh, maybe there's healing uh, that is due here. Um, but in general, you know, uh, you are back on track in your own life, uh, feeling like a thousand bucks with the Nine of Pentacles and the Sun, and you are absolutely nurturing that. Ooh, um, I have two minutes left on my camera, so I'm going to have to um, do this in two parts. Sorry, Taurus, I'm going to have to uh, do this in two parts. <laughs> 